It happened over the summer, but my boyfriend is still mad about it. I, 24 female, own my home. My boyfriend, 26, spends most of his time with me as he still lives with his parents. Therefore, he does not contribute to household expenses. My sister, Chloe, teen, asked to come live with me to escape our extremely toxic mother. I agreed, and my boyfriend said he was fine with it, so she's been with me since. Within the first few weeks of her living with me, I gave her some household tasks to help me with, and she seemed eager to help. While I was at work one day, I forgot to teach her how a dishwasher works because I got a frantic call from my Chloe where she was bawling and panicking. She told me what had happened. Basically, she just used the wrong soap, which led to bubbles getting everywhere and creating a huge mess. I calmed her down and we got the situation figured out, and she cleaned up. She answered the call and I thought all was well until I got home. I found Chloe sitting on the porch with an overstuffed backpack. I asked her what she was doing, and she tearfully told me that my boyfriend called her a useless witch and kicked her out over the dishwasher issue. I was furious. I comforted her and then went in and confronted boyfriend. We got into a huge argument that basically ended with me kicking him out and telling him that he wasn't allowed into the house until Chloe said he was allowed. He got angry and told me that a teen girl shouldn't have the power to dictate our relationship. So I kicked him out anyway. He hasn't been in my house since. I've still been dating him and every day he complains about not having the ability to get away from his parents and how he wishes I would just let him come back. I've tried to be sympathetic, but recently I told him to stop complaining. I don't want to hear it. He insulted and tried to kick out my sister, and this is the consequence. He got mad and started ignoring me, and I've been bombarded by friends calling me an idiot. I'm not fully sure I am, but I'm starting to question myself. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your boyfriend majorly overstepped. I'm surprised you're still dating him, honestly. Also, he's 26. If he doesn't want to be in his parents' home, he's old enough to find his own place and move out. He shouldn't expect to be able to live with you just because you own your own place. Not the idiot. He kicked your sister out of your home? She has more rights staying there in my eyes than he does. She's a child and your sister. He's an adult. He could look into getting his own place if he's so desperate to get away from his parents. Honestly, I don't see why you're still dating him after what he did. And now he keeps complaining and ignoring you? You can do better. Why are you dating him? I can understand not breaking up with him over this if he was apologetic for overreacting. However, months later, he still thinks his behavior was an appropriate and reasonable response to a mistake with an appliance? What about him is so good? that it makes this ridiculous thinking okay to you. OP, there are so many red flags in this, it's hard even to know where to start. He is 26 and bounces between sponging off his parents and you. He was unnecessarily cruel to your teenage sister. He thinks he has power despite contributing nothing. Now that he isn't getting his way, his answer is to ignore you. He's letting his friends harass you. From everything else, I'd be willing to guess he's encouraging it. It would be best if you got rid of this guy. You're the idiot if you stay with a man who thinks calling someone a useless witch when they make a mistake is acceptable. There are a lot of ways to be upset and frustrated about a situation without it going there. How's he going to act one day if you have a three-year-old who has a toilet training accident? He has no respect for you, your little sister. Cut him loose. I, 19 female, recently got the chance to safely see my boyfriend 20 male, family for a dinner. I work as a paramedic and would reject going to any plans my boyfriend had with me wanting to go see his family due to the global situation. I recently got the chance to have a two-week vacation and decided to accept my boyfriend offer to see his family. I asked my boyfriend what would be served and just checking in to see if what they would make won't have seafood slash shellfish since I'm allergic to them. The day comes and I have a good time with them up until it's time for us to eat. I noticed the food had mostly either seafood in it or was entirely seafood. I asked if they had anything else, but my boyfriend insisted I should just eat a little, not to be disrespectful. I stood my ground and informed his family that I'm severely allergic to seafood, and after they insisted they won't serve me or make anything that doesn't have seafood, I thanked them and left. Today I got an angry text message from my boyfriend, 
upset that I disrespected him and his family and wanted me to apologize to them, but I'm not going to. Am I the idiot? This is a tough one. Should you protect yourself from a severe allergy attack or should you protect your boyfriend's family's feelings? Not the idiot OP and drop the boyfriend. He's got a medical condition where his head is stuck real deep somewhere. But it's not protecting boyfriend's family's feelings because these sociopaths don't have any feelings. You tell them you're allergic to seafood slash shellfish and every dish has some? That is some next level psycho crap. You are not the idiot. You probably enjoy like, I don't know, being alive, right? That's scary. Glad you got yourself out of there. I can't imagine how not wanting to put oneself into a medical configuration that could lead to a fatal outcome could ever be considered idiot behavior. Boyfriend and his family demanding OP apologize for rudely not wanting to die? What is actually wrong with people? Does their seafood have extra lead in it or something? OP, you're a paramedic. How many people have you seen on the brink of death in the grip of anaphylaxis? How many EpiPens have you given in your time? Your boyfriend wants to show you what it's like to ride in the back of the ambulance? He's got to go. You are the idiot. You couldn't have just had a tiny bit, had an allergic reaction and died. Honestly, this generation is so disrespectful, caring more about their life than the hard work they put in to make that meal for you. In seriousness, I'm joking. Not the idiot. Like, allergies are serious. Red flag. Keep that in mind. Today, I, 29 male, had to stay overtime because my boss assigned me extra work just as I was going to leave for home. It was raining extremely heavily when I left my office. My shift usually is from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m., but today I had to stay back until 7 p.m. Most restaurants were closed due to heavy rain, so I called up my wife, 27, and requested her to keep some food for me in the refrigerator before going to bed. She said okay. I reached home only at 10 p.m., because of the heavy rain and traffic. I was feeling dizzy because I have type 2 diabetes and cannot go very long without food, but I hadn't eaten anything since 5 p.m. I tried to look for food in the refrigerator but couldn't find anything. I rummaged through the shelves but couldn't find the chocolates and other sweets I had stored for times when I experienced dangerously low blood sugar. My wife then came out from the bedroom, hearing loud noises. She gave me glucose powder and I started feeling better. She apologized for not cooking and said she was feeling tired because of her pregnancy. I asked her what happened to the sweets I had stored in the cupboard in case of such events. She said she was craving something sweet, so she ate them all. I yelled at her, saying I could have died and gone into a coma because of her thoughtless actions if she hadn't come to my aid on time. She got angry at me and said I should be considerate of her pregnancy cravings. I told her that cravings weren't serious enough to kill her, but low blood sugar could have killed me. She went into the bedroom sobbing. Am I the idiot? Did I overreact? Not the idiot. If those snacks help you with your blood sugar, your wife is a major idiot for eating them. I hate how people act like pregnancy is a disability and an excuse to act however they want. I get it. I've been pregnant twice, but you can't just expect that you can do whatever you want and everyone else has to bend to you. That was very careless of her and she owes you an apology. Yeah, especially the part where he calls ahead of time, asking for food to be ready because the restaurants are closed and she just blew him off with that, as well as eating all the snacks. It almost seems like she got a phone call from him that he had low blood sugar and then she went and ate all his low blood sugar stash. Something smells resentful and off about this situation. You are the idiot. You're a grown adult. You are responsible for managing your diabetes. You surely could have picked something up at a grocery store or service station during your somewhat inexplicable three-hour journey home. You did let your insulin level get so low that you arrived home feeling dizzy after not eating for five hours. It's your own fault. Not the idiot. Those are put aside for emergencies, not for her cravings. And honestly, I'm tired of women using pregnancy cravings as an excuse. I'm 33 weeks pregnant and not once have I eaten my boyfriend's snacks or made him get up at 2 a.m. to go get me something. I either find something else or suck it up and go back to bed. It's not that hard to be a decent partner. Three years ago, my 30 male, sister, 36, 
and I had the opportunity to get our dad, 62, a house that was close to us after our mom passed away. Before her passing, he used to be this funny, friendly, and happy guy who always made jokes and was the sunshine of our lives. But with all due reason, after my mom died, he became sad and lonely. He cried almost every day. It hurt our hearts to see him like that. We lived in the next city for work, and we begged him to please come with us. He refused at first, because leaving the family home hurt him more than living in it. But after a while, he agreed. He chose a small house just for him and his pets. We didn't rent him an apartment because he's not that kind of guy. He has a 2016 Aveo that doesn't drive that much right now. But from time to time, he likes to go back to our hometown and spend the day in places he and my mom used to go. The problem with this is that he can last a month or so without moving the car. He uses it more during October to December because it was my mom's favorite time of the year. Thus, his neighbors, a 25-ish married couple, use his driveway because the dude owns four cars and doesn't have the space. My dad doesn't have that much of a problem since he leaves the car in his garage and told me that he just calls the girl whenever he needs to get it out. She moves the other one until a few months ago when the girl is nowhere to be found. The guy is home all day. He asked him a few times to please move the car and the dude just says, yeah, sure, and takes an hour or two to do so. And my dad can't drive because it's already too dark for him to see. Yesterday, I visited him and he wanted me to take him to see some sports cars. I don't know, men. He's like a child that he found next to a park, like those public car pop-ups. I'm not sure. He wanted to drive his car, but the neighbor had his in my dad's driveway, and so we went to ask him to please move it. He said yes, but after 30 minutes of not seeing him, my dad explained the above to me, and I said no problem and called someone to get it towed. The dude freaked out when he saw what was happening and asked what I was doing. Apparently, the dude doesn't have the proper documentation for the car and can't get it back because he doesn't have the money. He's calling me an idiot, and while my dad doesn't agree with him, he doesn't agree with me either. But man, my dad was doing him a favor, and he acted like an entitled idiot. However, if I was wrong in my acting, I'm willing to apologize and get him his crap back. Not the idiot. Your dad was doing him a favor, giving him a privilege which he overstepped on. If the dude has four cars and can't park them, he needs to sell some or find a proper place to store them. He's old enough to be able to learn about consequences and your dad owes him nothing. Oops, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Everyone's the idiot here. Obviously, he shouldn't be an idiot about parking there. But this is your dad's house and driveway and he's going to have to live there next to this guy that you just made angry. If the guy retaliates, it's going to be against your dad who now has to be afraid of that and have a bad relationship with a neighbor. This should have been your dad's call, not yours. You are the idiot because you should have given him a warning. Your dad seems super sweet and I can understand why he would be upset. He probably doesn't want any problems with his neighbor. He should put up some boundaries though. They are lucky your dad allows it in the first place. If he asks for it to be moved, they need to get up and do it right away. The dad is clearly non-confrontational. They legit abused his generosity twice. He did nothing after the first time and let it be. If his son hadn't done anything, it would have continued to be like it. The neighbor is legit at the house, ignores the dad, and makes him wait for a favor? So because of the disrespect to his generosity, it's fair for his son to do this. My ex and I got together over three years ago, moved into my house after a year. She has two children from a previous relationship. We also have a child together who is now almost a year old. We mutually decided to break up a few weeks ago. I have my reasons and she has hers, but ultimately, her kids play a big role in the breakup. Not their fault. It's more about our different parenting styles. Due to my ex's trauma from when she was a kid and the kid's bio father emotionally abused all three, she had a protective bubble around them and that was a massive source of conflict. I could write a list, but I don't see how it would be beneficial to this. Anyways, we broke up because we didn't want to resent each other for our child's sake, like the way she resents her other kid's father. They have been staying here until she finds a new place. However, she keeps making remarks about how I'm going to struggle on my own, especially when I have my daughter half the time. I've left it 
because I'm pretty sure she's projecting. She will undoubtedly struggle. But it is also time. I was having a particularly bad day at work, and she knew, and she brought up how I would cope with work and our daughter. My life would be easier when they move out. Yes, I will have my daughter three nights or four days a week. I change my work pattern so when I do have her, I don't have to work, so I have no issues there. Looking after my daughter would be a breeze. I have no issues now looking after her. In fact, I made sure I have her more than her mother because I love spending time with her. And it will be even easier when she and her kids move out for so many reasons. The biggest is that all three cannot help themselves and always have to disturb my daughter when she's trying to sleep. So then she doesn't sleep and gets cranky and whines until I take her to my mother's so I can put her to sleep in peace. All three are extremely messy. My entire household is a minefield and it stresses me out to no end and none of them clean up after themselves. I also find myself doing more for her kids than she does. I always take them to school and pick them up, take them to their after school activities, make sure they are fed and shower often as otherwise she wouldn't remember. I also pay for everything related to the house. We only split shopping and petrol. So I told her that when they moved out, I would have more money to save because I'll be spending less on bills. And this is after me paying more than I should in child support. My house will be back to being clean and tidy, which will reduce my constant stress. Looking after my daughter will be less stressful because I will put in patterns in place to help. I will have more free time because I'm not spending it cleaning up all their messes running around all day for her kids when it is her job. My life will finally be back in my hands. She didn't take it too well and has been quiet ever since. Not the idiot, but four nights a week is primary custody. You should not be paying child support at all. Please get a formal custody agreement from the court. She should be paying you. Child support does not default to the mother. It's for parents who aren't involved in their kid's life slash don't have custody slash aren't spending money on them directly. And for the love of God, mention that you've done all the child care and provide all the evidence of her negligence. She regrets asking for the divorce because now she knows she's going to struggle and is trying to manipulate you into asking her to reconsider the divorce, especially now that you showed her how much she's going to struggle. Don't be rude or disrespectful about anything y'all discuss, but don't play into her mind games. If she says you'll struggle, Repeat why you won't struggle and why she will. You kicked her in the nuts with what you told her about her and her kids. She knows you're growing a backbone. Don't let her gain any ground with those kinds of things she's telling you. You are not the idiot unless you fail and end up staying with her. Absolutely this. This is one of those don't bite the hand that feeds you situations. She's projecting hard and regretting the breakup. She's going to be struggling. To be honest, if you're offering more child support than you owe, you're taking the high road. Don't be surprised when she wants to get back together three seconds after she moves out.